Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech. Today we have a legacy deck tech for you. Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. What is going on here? I, Brian Rowe of Mythic MTG Tech? What are you doing in my office? Your office? We have taken over to Larian Community College. What do you mean you've taken over the college? And are you wearing my jacket? What grounds do you have for that? The repeated use of the terms magic and MTG have allowed us to seize the college under trademark and copyright laws. But you get to stay on as a professor. I get to keep my job? Okay, uh, what kind of deck techs are we doing? We're only going to be doing legacy, EDH, and vintage content from here on out. Ooh, ooh, I call Commander Atogatog Tribal, here we come. Commander is all yours. We're moving yes. on to Legacy today, though, in preparation for the Seattle GP coming up. Hello, this is Brian Rowe, guest professor here today in Legacy Studies for Tolarian Community College. Legacy is at a really exciting point because it just got shaken up significantly with the banning of Dig Through Time. And the deck that I'm playing was a very powerful Dig Through Time deck, a Grixis control deck that I believe still has a lot of power in the current metagame. These are the cards that I'm 100% sure should be in here. They're staples in the environment. In Brewing, these are cards that I would probably not pull at all. I've got four Force of Wills here, although I have played three Force of Wills in less combo-ridden environments. Deathrite Shaman is my favorite creature ever printed. Very powerful, has almost as many powerful abilities as most Planeswalkers. I've got four Young Pyros here, and Young Pyromancer is really a red moat. Once you start cantripping, you can block for long periods of time. You can also often cast a bunch of spells in a turn and start a race against your opponent to end the game rather quickly. I'm playing four Brainstorms in this deck. Brainstorm is simply the most powerful card in Legacy. It's also the toughest card to play. It's often better the later in the game that you draw it. It turns your extra lands or dead cards into powerful amazing cards. It becomes a draw two or draw three instead of a draw three and put back two and what you're really doing is putting back cards that have no impact on the game. The next suite that I'm playing goes particularly well with the Young Pyromancers. It is Or Cobble Therapies, very, very skill-intensive card. This card is a powerhouse. I strongly recommend looking at the major net decks that people have been playing a few weeks before you go to a tournament and trying to figure out what cards you would name in the blind when playing Cobble Therapy. Another really important thing to notice about Cobble Therapy is you don't name the card until you're on resolution. Cast it, put it out there, see if they're going to counter it first before naming the card. Don't cast that spell as a single action. Take each of those parts separately. I've got three Gitaxian probes in here to help with the cobble therapies and also power the young pyromancers. Knowledge is power. It helps you craft a game plan. Force of Will is so much better as a card if you know whether or not someone has duplicate threats, whether you need to look for a board wipe, or whether you have to take care of this combo piece right away. These are the four of kind of mainstays that you're going to see in everybody's deck. As we get into the next group of cards, these are two ofs. They're a little bit less common to see, although what I've really done is shaped some of what other people play as four ofs and turned them into two ofs here to make room for a diversity of threats. Ponder, I've only got two of in this deck. The more ponders and the more cantrips that you play, the more susceptible you are to Thalia's, and Thalia is really, really good right now. Since Dig Through Time is gone, Death and Taxes has gotten much better, so I'm cutting back a little bit on the cantrips. I'm playing two Snapcaster Mages here, and as you see the rest of the deck build out, there are so many good things to snap back. One of the more controversial ones that I'm playing here is Sudden Shock. Sudden Shock is often better than Lightning Bolt. Let me repeat that. Sudden Shock in Legacy is often better than Lightning Bolt. Legacy is full of counter spells. The ability to put this on the stack and not have your opponent be able to respond is extremely powerful. Mother of Runes is also seeing a lot of play currently. With Sudden Shock, you can often two for one someone in combat. They attack in with some creatures, you Sudden Shock their mom, they can't respond to keep their Mother of Runes alive, and the creature 
creature that they were hoping to give protection to ends up with a very bad combat situation where one of your creatures is blocking that creature and killing it. The next card here is a card that's playable in standard and it should be extremely played in the legacy and in modern. Hooligan's Command, return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Remember the Snapcaster Mages and the Young Pyromancers? Being able to bring those back to your hand late game is very important. Target player discards a card. This command is instant speed. You can do this during your opponent's draw step after they've drawn before they get a chance to cast that creature or that sorcery that they just drew. Amazing card. The next two are a little bit less relevant, although I've been surprised at how good destroy target artifact is in Legacy. Now that we've moved to a little bit of a slower environment, Stoneforge Mystics have gotten much more popular. This can kill any of the artifacts that they go get, and most of the small creatures in those Death and Taxes, Maverick, even Merfolk decks often have multiple targets for this. The next four cards is an interesting suite that I've been playing a lot in Vintage that I really like in Legacy, and that's two Notion Thieves and two Dak Fadens. We're a very heavy control deck with a good amount of counter magic and a good amount of answers. We often go into the late game. Late game, if my opponent draws and plays a Brainstorm and I play a Notion Thief, I draw three cards, it becomes an Ancestral Recall for me, and my opponent puts two cards, often land that they're holding in their hand, back on top of their deck. This card can be a complete blowout. And it combos really well with Dak Faden. With Dak Faden, you plus one your opponent so that they normally would draw two cards and discard two, but with the Notion Thief out, you're the one drawing two cards and they're discarding two cards. Dak Faden is also very good in this Stoneforge Mystic environment. Being able to steal an Umazawa's Jite is wonderful, but even if you don't have artifacts to go after, I often leave this guy in. This deck has a lower casting cost, lower curve, and this turns the later land that you draw into real spells. The next few cards that we're going to look at are singletons. I'm a huge proponent of singleton theory. The idea that you should diversify your threats and diversify your answers so that whatever threat you use to win game one is often going to be different than the threat you use to win game two. Your opponent sideboards in four of or eight of something to deal with your threat. If it's a singleton in your deck, they're going to have a mismatched answer and you're going to kill them with an entirely different threat, which gets us to True Name Nemesis, a wonderful card for ending the game rather quickly, and a great defensive blocker. As a singleton in here, he has won me so many games and saved me a lot of games. We've also got a Tassiker in here, great legend with Delve. There's a strong argument though, as Death and Taxes is getting more popular, to actually replace this with a Gurmog Angler. Just a vanilla 5-5 that is as easy to catch can be better against Caracas, which is very popular right now. I've got a single counter spell in here, two blue counter a spell, having a hard counter that you can snap back easily with Snapcaster Mage is incredibly powerful. Next, I've got Liliana the Veil. Liliana is the answer to other people's true name nemesis or fair decks. I've got a singleton lightning bolt here. Many people would play three lightning bolts instead of the two sudden shocks and a single lightning bolt. Give those sudden Sudden Shocks a shot. They are incredibly strong in the current meta. Lightning Bolt is still one of the best red cards ever printed, and getting rid of three toughness creatures is important. Toxic Deluge is one of the best board wipes we've ever seen printed. Three casting cost can kill creatures that are indestructible or that regenerate. Very, very powerful card. And last here, I've got a Jace the Mind Sculptor. Jace just has a very different win condition, allows you to deal with pest creatures by popping them back into your opponent's hands and brainstorming every turn is extremely valuable. There is a strong argument though in this particular deck and given the low amount of lands that are in it, only 19, to replace this Jace with the new Jace that is in standard. A two casting cost planeswalker that allows you to cast all of these great spells from your graveyard is a very strong alternative to Jace the Mind Sculptor. Let's jump right into the land of this deck, although I've called it a Grixis 
this deck, there is a very small amount of green in it. But most importantly, I am playing two basics in this deck. I've got an island and a swamp. It's terrible to be blown out by wastelands and stifles. Choke is also a very powerful card in Legacy. So having ways around choke is very important. I will often fetch these basics first to make sure that I get to the powerful two and three casters in this deck. Galen is here because blue has the most powerful one drops in the game, and the swamp is here for Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman allows me to accelerate into three mana and get to some incredible three drops really quickly. I'm playing one non-blue duel, which is Badlands, completes my Grixis colors there, and then we move into the islands. I'm playing three volcanic islands. I'm also playing three underground seas in here. The last island in this deck is a tropical island. It is the sole source of green in the deck and allows me to get a little bit of life gain when needed out of the Deathrite Shaman. In the sideboard, I also run an Abrupt Decay that can be powered off of this. I'm running four Polluted Deltas because they fetch my two basics, and then all of my other fetches grab islands. I'm running three Scaldings and one Misty, although it doesn't matter which fetches you play at that point, you can definitely mix up the fetches as long as they grab islands. The last card that I'm playing that most people don't play in this type of a deck is a Cavern of Souls. Miracles is very popular here in the Northwest, and I really like to make sure that my wizards and my humans, and occasionally even shaman end up resolving. Cavern of Souls is a very underplayed card in Legacy overall. The sideboard is designed to deal with some of the tougher matchups. This is a control deck, not an aggro deck, so you really need your sideboard full of answers. The first deck that could be a bit of a problem is any type of reanimator or dredge deck. We've got five to seven answers depending on the particular deck that they're playing. Surgical Extraction as a singleton, two Nile Spell Bombs, and two Graph Diggers Cages really help deal with Dredge in particular. The Reanimator decks, I've also got a special piece of tech here wipe away. Reanimator is very strong currently because it's playing a lot of blue in the deck. Blue helps them make sure that their combo comes out, and wipe away is a great answer to that reanimated 8, 9, 10 caster that is just crazy on the board. Wipe Away is also brought in against the lands matchup. Those Merit Leeds tokens look pretty silly back in their owner's hands. The rest of the sideboard deals with particular threats and is designed to reinforce the main deck strategies. We've got an additional Lightning Bolt for those fair decks. We've got an additional Culligan's Command for decks like Storm where the hand destruction does actually matter, but this also comes in against a lot of the fair decks, against Stoneforge Mystics. It's a great answer. Got a Grim Lava Mancer here for dealing with creatures. A lot of good creature decks out there in Legacy, and a lot of them just cringe at Grim Lava Mancer. Got a Golgari Charm, particularly for the minus one, minus one to all creatures. A great way to deal with your opponent's true nemesis. An Abrupt Decay in here. Really good against those lower casting cost decks that actually play permanence. I also like this against Miracles in particular. This is a incredible answer to counterbalance and top. And then the last three cards here really help with our control suite. We've got a Pyroblast, a Fluster Storm, and a Mind Break Trap. With these sighted in, you will win counter wars, and they often won't see these answers coming. Mind Break Trap, in particular, is an amazing budget card that is underplayed in Modern and in Legacy. It even works against Cavern of Souls. You exile the spell that is on the stack, not counter it. Super powerful. If you're in the middle of a counter war, you can often counter several things on the stack, making it very difficult for your opponent to possibly ever win that counter war. And Flusterstorm is another wonderful counter spell. Pyroblast is a wonderful red one casting cost counter spell 
that counters True Name Nemesis and most of the other broken blue cards in Legacy. If you've got any questions or ideas about this deck, things that you think could be improved, please leave them in the comments. I am actively improving this deck with the intent of playing it at GP Seattle. Thank you to Tolarian Community College for this opportunity to give a guest lecture in Legacy Studies, particularly homebrewing Grixis Control. All right, who's ready for five color ATOG? Oh, Brian, now that you're in charge, do I get benefits and healthcare and tenure? No.